for David Wilson out and about YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm doing a bit of a review video or more a first impressions video. Um, I've recently purchased an e-bike and it's literally turned up this morning so I may be assembling that this afternoon, possibly tomorrow morning. But uh, I've also been picking up a few accessories, um, one of which is the G. Kenny Smart Brake Sensing Anti-Theft Bicycle Alarm Light. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. So basically it's a rear light or a tail light for a bike. Um, but what intrigued me was it has an alarm and also it has uh, this brake sensor on it. So if, if you slow down, if you're going along and you slow down or grind to a halt, a brake light comes on. Uh, obviously that's yet to prove itself. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to basically go through what's in the box and the setup. As I said, this is a first impressions not a full-blown review. Once it's on the bike and it's tried and tested with a few other accessories, I'll probably go over quite a few of the accessories and mods that I've done to the bike. Right, without further ado, let's crack on with the review. Well, I won't bore you by uh, showing you a video of me taking it out of the box. I think we can all do that. So what I'll do, I'll start from nearest to furthest. Um, firstly, it comes with its own charging cable which uh, unfortunately it's type D, not the new type C, but there you go. I'm sure we've all got plenty of those leads. Here is the main light alarm. Um, as you look at it, on your left, there is the charging point. So there's just a little uh, rubber grommet. Struggling to get it open at the moment. And inside there is the charging port. On the back, that is the speaker so obviously when the alarm goes off that's where that comes out on the opposite side or on your right is the power on button using the button on the actual light only goes through on and sorry on and light one two three four and off you can't set the alarm or anything like that on it it's purely just all the light modes it has got a reflector on it, which is quite a nice touch. So if it is switched off and uh, car lights hit it, you will still get, um, they, you will still be seen. So uh, yeah, it's quite a nice unit. Um, I bought this off of Amazon. There wasn't masses of reviews on it. And I think I've seen two video reviews, but uh, they got all the sizes wrong, but it was ridiculous. They were putting it down as like 45 centimeters long. I mean, I'm just sure it was all supposed to be millimeters. So um, I'll give you the diameters. I mean, it's quite a small unit. The diameters are long. It's 45 millimeters. That's 1.7 inches. Its width is 40 millimeters. That's 1.6 inches. And its height is 50 millimeters. That's two inches. So it's quite a, a compact little unit. It weighs 48 grams on its own. And with the actual bracket that's on the one of the bike posts, it weighs a total of 64 grams. Uh, so it's, it's quite lightweight. Um, yes, you can, like I said, you can switch it on and off by the rubber side button, but uh, you do come with, it comes with a remote, but more about that in a moment. We also have a bracket that's to attach it to either the, the seat post or one of the posts. So uh, you just obviously screw that on. There's a little uh, screw there, position it where you want it. It's got a rubber lining so it doesn't scratch the post and then you just clip the bike light in because it's USP charged obviously so you will need to slip it in and out at some point. So you've got that. You've also got a saddle mount which is um, you probably hook in like that and you've got I think they've sent three cable ties so you can sort of loop it round and then again you can I think it'd be that way up no it'd be that way up and then you can slide it in so You've got two ways of actually mounting it. Once again, once I get the bike up and running and I've tested it out, what I'll do, I'll probably go through the installation of that along with some of the other accessories. Next on the list is the remote control, which is a nice touch. Looks a bit, well, looks almost exactly like a car key. It comes on a bracket, which is curved, so that can actually sit on your handlebars and it's got a very, very large uh, cable tie to slip through and secure it. I may look at trying to get some sort of thin Velcro strap. I think that'll be better, but again, the proof will be in the pudding. 
All you do, if it's attached, you push down the front, you slide it out, push it back in, and it locks in. So, uh, yeah, quite a nice little touch. You have got an instruction manual in English, among other languages, but in all fairness, I know I'm an old boy, but even with this, I'm really, really struggling. I mean, I've just basically blagged it and worked out how to use it. It's in Chinese on one side. I think I was trying to read that. The writing is so small, absolutely typical. I've probably got it the wrong way up. No, it's the right way up. It's absolutely tiny writing. So uh, I've just looked at a couple of reviews and the rest of it, I've just managed to work out myself, but it is there. Um, I've not actually searched to see if there's a, an online version of it, which I could print off in A4, but I, I actually don't need it now. So I, I'm not personally worried. And I'm gonna talk you through many of the features of this in a moment. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to talk you through the alarm. So I'm going to unclip it. Right, we have four functions on here, or four buttons, rubber buttons. The top one is to arm the alarm. The second one down is to disable the alarm. The third one down is the light modes. And the fourth one down is a bell, so you can actually use it as a warning. So that's arm the alarm. This is alarm, disable the alarm, the light functions, which there's four of and off, and then there's the bell. So what I'll do, I'll actually switch the unit on and we'll start going through the, uh, the functions of the actual light. Right, I'm gonna put it where I can see it and you can see it, and it's probably gonna be quite blinding even though it's daylight. So first of all, I'm going to switch it on, and this will be number one. So on the third button down, which is basically like a thunderbolt, if you press that once, that will be bringing the unit on, and it'll be called flashing mode. And there we go, there you're in flashing mode. Now, if you stop the bike and lock it up or whatever, while you're moving things around, the light will keep flashing. But if the bike doesn't move for 21 seconds in that mode, it then shuts off. Now, when I say it shuts off, it's not turned off. It's just gone to sleep. So as soon as you touch the bike again, the light will come back on. So there you go, 21 seconds. In the book, it says 30 seconds. I timed it on all the modes. It was 21 seconds. Now, again, on the Thunderbolt, if you press it twice, you go into what's called breathing mode. Once again, while you're in motion, that will operate all the time. As soon as you stop, if you're locking the bike up and you're still moving, the light will still operate. But as soon as you stop moving and the bike's locked up and you move away from it, 21 seconds later, that will go to sleep. There you go, it's gone to sleep again. Now in the first mode, flashing, the manufacturers say, because I haven't tested it, that you'll get 40, approximately 40 hours of battery life. In the second mode, breathing mode, you'll get 40 hours of battery life. So it's a, if, if that's true, that's, that's a fair old time. If the battery starts to fail, when you switch the unit on, you'll get two beeps or blur, blur, and that's telling you the battery's low. There's no lights on it to flash, but you'll get a double signal, a blur, blur, and that's telling you that you need, need, need to recharge your uh, device. One, two, three, let's just turn it off. One, two, three. And now we're in what's called strobe mode. This is a daytime function. It's about a third brighter than the other functions. Obviously the idea uh, that you can be seen during the day. The others are sort of like slightly more subtle. Again, it's got the go to sleep mode after 21 seconds if the bike's standing still and it will reactivate as soon as you, there's any movement or even a shake in the bike, the light will come on. There you go, it switched itself off. If I shake it, it's come back on. So that will be representing moving the uh, bike. Right. I'm gonna go off. One, two, 
three, four. This mode is called steady, it's obvious, it's just the light on. This would operate, or the manufacturers say this will operate like this for around about 20 hours. Um, this mode is always on, so if you get off the bike and walk off, it's just going to stay on all the time. So you actually got to physically switch it off. And you can do that on the remote, like I said, we've just gone through four modes. Now five is off, and I mean off. Yeah, so very, very briefly, we'll go through them again. Switching on and one. So that's the on and flashing mode. Two is the breathing mode. Three is strobe, daytime mode. Four is steady. Five is off. So that's all your actual light functions. Three of them go to sleep automatically. The fourth, which is steady, doesn't. It's just on all the time. And when I say goes to sleep, it reactivates automatically as well on touching the bike. What I've just done, I'm bringing the remote a little bit closer for you. Top button, arm the remote. Second button, dis sorry, arm the alarm. Second button, disable the alarm. Third button, light modes. Fourth button, bell or warning sound. Right, okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch it on to light. We're in daytime, it's a bit overcast today, but we'll go to the daytime mode. So I go to the Thunderbolt, one, two, three. And I'm happily riding along, lights flashing, and I brake. So what it does, it senses sudden movement. It's not actually, you know, I don't think it's going to be as accurate as they, they claim, but literally, look, if I, yeah, it's flashing and going along, stop, and the brake light comes on, and then it starts flashing again. If I go backwards, forwards, stopped, and the brake light comes on impressive it's going to be hard to actually test out obviously because it's going to be on the, the back of the bike and i'm going to be actually riding it but uh, fingers crossed it all works out so here we are we're riding along we've just uh been braking and going forward and braking and going forward now we've stopped we've locked the bike up padlocked it up and now we want to set the alarm so what we do we press the pop top button once Now it's activated, so it's five seconds later. So when you press it, don't touch it. Leave it till you hear that blur, and then the alarm is activated, okay? Second button down, and it's showing like locked and a lock open, like a padlock open. Second button down, I come back to the bike. Right, so let's set another scenario. So I go to the bike, I've actually, yes, I've switched it off. So it's not in uh, sleep mode. So now I press the Thunderbolt. I'm riding at night and I fancy strobe. So that was one, two, three. I pull up. I'm locking the bike up. And the light will go to sleep after 21 seconds. And I decide I want to, as we say in London, bell it up, switch the alarm on. So I press the top button padlock closed wait a few five seconds and there she goes now she's alarmed so I'm away someone comes along touches the bike that is your warning shot that's the shot over your head you get a double beep telling you to leave the bike alone if you then continue to touch it within I think it's 30 seconds there we go. And that's it deactivated that is absolutely deafening. Right, so now let's try the bell. So at the bottom one, if it was on the actual holder, and you were riding along and you wanted to give someone a warning, although my bike's got a bell on it. That'll frighten the absolute life out of them. Now, if you press the bell, which is the fourth button, if you press it and hold it down for six seconds, it cycles through the three different tones. So if I press it, I press that one. Keep my finger on it. So if I let go, it would stay on that. Uh, 
time to get the third one up. That's it. That is absolutely evil on your ears, that third one. That's the bell. That's the thing. If you're using it as a bell, you wouldn't want that. You would absolutely frighten the life out of people. But as an alarm sound, it is so piercing. Now, I know I'm indoors, so outdoors it will obviously yeah, dissipate. But, uh, yeah, that, that is fairly loud. I think um, if he wasn't too far away, he was sitting in a cafe or whatever. I, I, it, it would bring attention to the bike. Well, I don't think there's anything else to do other than obviously once I get the bike up and running, I'll, um, there we go, light back on. I'll be uh, fitting this on and then I'm picking up other accessories. I've not ordered too much because it's very easy to get carried away while I was waiting for the bike, although it was quick considering it was, it was ordered over the Christmas period. Um, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't expecting it till January. If you start ordering stuff, the bike turns up and it doesn't fit. I knew this would fit so now I've got the bike I'm looking at uh, I've ordered a pannier rack that I know will fit because I want to do a little bit of possibly light uh, bike camping with it um, but I need to get that fitted to see if it's the correct one for the disc brakes and then I'm going to look at into pannier bags but I'm not jumping ahead of myself and wasting money and having to send stuff back because it's not compatible with the bike but what I'm hoping to do as I pick bits up and obviously I go out for rides I, I will video it so I'm going to start an actual uh, e-biking playlist on my uh, channel so uh, I fill that up with rubbish as I do <laughs> so yes that's it right well it's New Year's Eve uh, I'm just mucking around indoors like I said I'm gonna build my bike I'm not I've got no plans of going anywhere but what I would like to say is uh, I wish you all a happy new year I mean I, I wish you health and a stress-free year next year. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. Well, I'm back. Just a little thing I forgot. Um, charging. I'm charging it off of a uh, power bank at the moment. Plugged in, you get this solid, dim, red light, and um, from flat, it takes approximately three hours to charge. So, uh, sorry I missed that out. Bye again.